Uh, I begin by thanking um, um, Ajay and Shaheen and, and Joanna for inviting me here to uh, for these reflections. This is not my my discipline. I come from a discipline of arts and and and, and uh, cultural work, so it's an, an interesting take. It's indeed been very rich and, uh, and very productive. Can I, do you mind if I stay here? I've just I've just got all my stuff in front of me, and I would yeah, just, me a, is that okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. I can, yeah, I can go up there for a photo op later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start with a, a very uh, a, a quotation, which I'll return to at the end of this, and I am actually going to try and get us out of here by uh, nine to the reception. So that'll be a challenge. Um, the quotation, uh, which I'll I'll, uh, I'll give the, the citation for it later, is: "All we want to do is get as far away as possible, but we can't." Now. The other quotation that I want to bring, bring to the forefront, I think it's very important for this particular context, uh, is to, uh, as, we, as we're used to, we're acknowledging uh, the land that we're on, the, the first peoples of this land. And I, I want, in, in the context of health, I want to look at a, a quotation that I, I first came to through uh, the Vietnamese-American filmmaker, uh, Trinh Thi Minh Ha, where she talked about how there was a, a first world in every third world and a third world in every first. Now, I know that's somewhat dated language from what we use in terms of development, but I, I think that's a very important context, and I, I'm going to refer back to this in a particular way because I think it's come up through, through these, uh, the environment that we've created here. Uh, uh, Shaheen begins us by, uh, with us by talking about uh, this notion of diaspora as an affecting change in a remote place of uh, attachment, which I think is it was the impetus behind this project. And uh, Joanna then takes us into this idea of the sharing of stories, which of course lays the platform for us and uh, uh, charges me with the uh, unenviable task, as she's put it, of, uh, of, of trying to summarize or trying to bring some, some, uh, some summary to this, this project. Uh, I, will, I will get her back for this someday. <laughs> um, Jerry Spiegel uh, begins, begins with us talking about equity, uh, notions of equity and disparity. Uh, he brings up concepts, I think, of the circumstantial <clears throat> and the contextual, and I think those are very important contexts. To keep, keep that circumstance and context in mind, he talks about this notion of the collaborative interdisciplinary, uh, notion of the collaborative interdisciplinarity. And I would take this to another level. I'd say <clears throat> that the transdisciplinary approaches that allow us to see the, the actual opacity of our own disciplinary limits. Uh, and the possibilities afforded beyond our spheres of knowledge. <clears throat> By picking up on, on Professor Spiegel's notion, I think that leads into this notion of the with rather than for, and I think that, that is a critical point that we've all been addressing here. We, we need to, we talk about. Um, up next was Ayumi, and she's, uh, she's um, set up this, this, uh, this dialogue uh, amongst us, allowed us to meet, uh, meet our colleagues and to talk about this kind of embodied presence of this collaboration, um, and it's a, uh, what I would call a way of seeing together. And this is something we're going to ex explore in the, in the reception. Um, Shafiq Parani talks about uh, economic feasibilities and uh, it, uh, the way of, of treating a particular condition, a particular medical condition, but then moves on uh, later in, in this discussion to this idea of sustainability and what we can do toward that end. Um, this is something that, uh, that, again, Professor Spiegel comes back to, talks about looking at the professional interactions uh, <clears throat> to channel what he calls the, um, the positive aspects of globalization. That's a, that's a very challenging phrase, and I think we, 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 we need to give it some, some light and some, some talk. What are these positive aspects of globalization? Are they actually there, or how can we create them? Um, uh, uh, Professor Perani, again, talks about this enabling environment. Um, and for him, he talks about the Canadian government, but I want to, uh, to think about how we can and how we need to look beyond, of course, those professional, those, those, uh, those the institutions that we're used to looking at in terms of funding, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of a type of leadership. Uh, and I think Stephen actually addressed that too, when he, and I'll come to his, his comments in a moment, which he talks about enabling of a very different kind and a very, um, uh, a, a very uplifting, uplifting way. Um, he, he, his, his work, of course, talking about the, the, this, the, uh, the earthquake in Sichuan province, the, it showed the, the way an initial act can build through and with compassion. Now that, to me, was a very important point. It's not about uh, the practicalities of things, but the actual initial desire for this. Um, he talks, too, about this, what I call a kind of self as connector, looking forward and uh, when you're looking forward by looking backwards. And it reminds me of uh, 
a, a, a quotation I've, I've used repeatedly in, in contexts like this from it's a Maori proverb, which talks about uh, walking, um, uh, walking backward into the future. And the idea of that, of course, is to always be looking, not to where you're going, which is a very linear approach to see what must be in front of us, but to look backwards, uh, to, to always be knowing that if, if you're walking along a certain path, you, uh, you're seeing where you've been, and that takes you to where you'll go. And I think that's a very important concept that I think I, I was, I was reminded of what, what Stephen was talking about. Uh, <clears throat> Marjorie Rattel um, brought up something interesting when she, she talked about the full, uh, the full toolkit, the notion of the full toolkit to build infrastructures, and also uh, uh, reminded us of a pan-African approach, uh, which then moves beyond the, the, the notion of the national boundary, but it does uh, pay uh, uh, pay a very close attention to the notion of the regional and what happens in those in those regional developments. Um, in talking of Ghana and, and uh, the contemporary world of uh, communication, I was intri intrigued by what she said about the Skype every day, and it was reminding me of uh, uh, she talked about. Well, I was thinking of I was actually thinking of um, of um, of Stein and uh, the notion of the continuous present, because what. What she seems to be talking about here, what Marge seems to be talking about here, is the continuous presence, being there all the time, being able to see people and have that conversation so things don't get put out of mind and out of the way. Uh, Derek Akibang Apoku talks about giving back to Africa, uh, and, and he touches on something that came up in conversation, and again is something that ties in very well with the notion of sustainability, which is the inspiring of youth. Now, to do this, um, it, it has to be picked up and, and be seen as sustainable. We have to be careful of that as a buzzword. I think people were alluding to that, but also to see it as a, a type of continuum. Uh, the youth are not a static group, of course. It's 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 a con it's an org we're, we are part of an organism. We're growing. We're always nurturing. We're always changing. We have to be very aware of that because without that, there's no no possibility for change. Um, Mohammed Zaman, uh, very interesting notion of climate change um, in, in Bangladesh, and he talks about it as an epicenter of uh, a climatic disaster. This brought to mind what I was thinking of as, as the issue of health as being beyond the issue of health. Um, and I use that in a kind of poetic way because I think we have to recognize every time we talk about something, uh, by defining it, we're also limiting it. And so uh, I think it was very interesting to think of climate uh, and, and other issues around the environment, other issues around the body, other issues around spirit, which if we don't look at now, we, we won't have the opportunity to, to look at. It's, it's the same idea of looking backwards. We have to look at our pasts in, or, and, our, and look at our present environment to understand where we're at in terms of health, in terms of all these larger issues. He also brings up a very interesting notion of adaptation and adjustment. Um, and the need for local solutions. Um, and of course the, the notion of capacity building, which again can be a bit of a buzzword, but, uh, but how is it we can actually look at that as a context? How do we actually build the capacity that needs to be done? Because the solutions can't be, can't be external, and can't be uh, um, thrown at it through, either through money or through other means. They have to be understood in the body. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, Lauren uh, Chu talks about uh, spirituality uh, and this is a really good point to, to finish on, spirituality as a harmonious practice, uh, living within the world um, while transcending the world. Now, I think that that idea, which, uh, again, as someone who comes at it from literature, thinks I think of uh, a notion of negative capability, the seemingly impossible or contradictory notions held at the same time. Uh, there can't be this harmony, I think, without what she talks about as this living within and, in a sense, without the world, because, uh, because that's the, the essence of, of understanding ourselves in this, this context. Um, as she talked about, uh, she's talking about traditional Chinese medicine, I was thinking of other notions of traditional knowledge, uh, which, as much as we often pay lip service to, we often forget, we, we treat it as an also run, an added on thing to to, to other forms of, say, medicine or, or treatment. So I, I call this a type of indigenous knowledge. And when I say indigenous knowledge, I don't mean just the, uh, the, the notion of, say, first people's knowledge in this, in this nation or various forms of very localized um, uh, uh, forms of knowledge, but something that's what I would call is a, it has a certain grounding in place. 
And the same goes for the body, and the same goes for the ideas. There has to be a certain grounding, which is a very interesting and important thing to talk about when we're talking about diaspora, because diaspora by its very nature is talking about being displaced and out of place. And, uh, but with that, I think the, the notion of this project, of course, is diaspora looking back, uh, looking toward, and looking forward in a, in a particular way. Um, uh, something that, uh, that Mike had said too about this transcending the local. Uh, he talked about an intergenerational and inter interspecial. I think that's speaking to these these points uh, these points as well. Um, I'm going to to finish with that that quotation that I gave you at the beginning. Uh, All we want to do is get a, get as far away as possible, but we can't. Now that quotation uh, it was just in the paper today. It's from uh, Eriko Eshita, uh, who who ended up about 30 kilometers from the Fukushima reactor. And she's saying, you know, the problem is that many people are stuck there, they run out of gas, they can't go anywhere, they're, they're stuck. I use this as, as to, to highlight the, the, the what's happening in our sphere. And this is happening in our sphere, as many people have pointed out to us. But as a metaphor, too, for, for what we need to do. As much as we want to get away as far as possible, we can't. And that includes from, from these very intricate and intimate issues uh, of, uh, of care and responsibility. Um, we have to be aware that as much as we want to run away because of protection, for health, for, for saving ourselves, all these reasons that have come up, it's something that we can't do. I think we have to, to in a sense, uh, make a stand and take our place in this world as, uh, as many of these, these uh, elegant and eloquent speakers have brought to our attention. Thank you.